indoor arena here in Birmingham and to the 1995 Gladiators Heats. Now, did you know it takes a crew of 200 only about three days to get all the equipment set up for our Gladiators series? We use 700 lights, 18 cameras, and about nine kilometers of cable. But most fantastically of all, we need over 200 bottles of massage oil to make our gladiators shine. Yeah. It's true, it's true. It's no wonder we're the biggest show on British TV. Yeah. Certainly the prizes are the biggest. First prize, cash for two, 5,000 pounds. That's each, that's not split. A holiday for two at the Atlantis Holiday Complex on the Paradise Island in the Bahamas! <laughs> Plus, the four-wheel drive, off-the-road, family vehicle. Woo. And of course, our two runners-up will not walk away empty-handed. They'll each take home £2,000. <laughs> so let's meet the guys and girls competing for these prizes. Tonight, the girls are Mel Cambridge. And Mandy Beecher! How are you feeling? Okay, sure. Not too bad at all. Tell us what you do and where you're from. I'm a PE teacher and I teach at Francis Barsley School for Girls! There's one or two of them here. Where's that? In Manford. Oh. So what sort of things do you put the girls through then on an ordinary day? Um, everything. Depending on the time of the season. At the moment it's been athletics, tennis, rounders. Um, during the winter it'll be netball. Hockey, gymnastics, things like that. But we, we try to put them through the paces. I bet you do. So you're a good all-rounder as well. What do you enjoy doing? Everything from mountain biking, circuits, weights, to rock climbing. Now, I know you've got one unfulfilled ambition. Tell us about that. I would like to be an astronaut and fly on a space shuttle. Oh. I'm hoping we can promise you that tonight, but we are going to send you flying up a giant pyramid. So are you looking forward to that? <laughs> yeah. You'll have to. Mel Cambridge, good luck. OK, Mandy, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do for a living? I'm a detective constable, and I work at Islington Police Station in North London. Yes, and a lot of support, I can see. Are they all here tonight? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, people from my police station, as well as all over the Met, so if there's any crowd trouble, we know where to look. Certainly do. Now, tell me, I know the police work unusual shifts, to say the least. Do you get time to do any training? It can be very difficult and you have to be quite motivated, but I've been very lucky because I've had the best physical training instructor and that's my brother, Justin. And he must be here, obviously. Yeah, he's here, he's in the front row. Good, you've got all the motivation you'll be needing anyway. Off you go, get yourself ready. Mandy Beecher! So let's meet the guys tonight. They are John Tyson. And Mark Everett. I'm an assistant manager at Silkswood Sports Complex in sunny Sunderland. So you obviously enjoy your work and you're obviously a fit guy. I understand you're a sport mad, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a bit sport mad. I do a lot of biking, a lot of running, a lot of swimming, circuit training, just everything really. And what's your favourite? Um, skiing, of course. Now, tell us, what, how have you found it being on Gladiators so far, rehearsing for the shows? Uh, first of all, it's been really good fun. It's been a lot harder than I thought. I think I've been injured in every possible place, but uh, I've recovered and I'm, I'm happy and I'm looking forward to it. Well, I hope you don't sustain any more injuries tonight. John Tyson, good luck! <laughs> OK, Mark, you're looking very confident. What do you do for a living? I work in Boston. I make pillows, quilts and curtains. So all you housewives out there, please note. What do you do in your spare time? Um, well, I do the decathlon. That's ten events. Um, I do weight training and um, martial arts to keep me supple. Any other hobbies? Uh, I do tend to jump over cars. What do you mean you jump over cars? Well, it started for a bet when I was a bit younger. Um, my friends betted me to jump over a small car, maybe a metro, uh, and it just progressed, and now I'm jumping big cars. Well, how would you like to jump over a Jeep? I'd like to, but I've got to win it first. You're right there. <laughs> Off you go, Mark. Get yourself ready. Mark Everett! <laughs> for their first event, so here it is. And in the yellow atmosphere is Mandy! And in the orange sphere, it's Mel! And they're going to be facing 
Casting, Amazon! And the Lightning! Oh, we're going to go Amazon. And a capacity crowd here at the National Indoor Arena fired up for these Thunderballs from hell. The wheels of steel, the spears of fear. Atmospheres. Rookie gladiator Amazon looks ready to roll. Over to the gladiators Judge Dredd, John Anderson. Check, punch, for smoke. Contender! Constable Mandy Beecher rolls into action without the benefit of a blue flashing light. In the orange, Fell Cambridge. You don't get balls like these in the lottery. And he breaks for pot two. Hits the afterburner for three points. Melon four. Vaporizes her pot as well. Amazon trying to mark PE teacher Mel. And Lightning keeping the detective under close surveillance. Here comes Mel on pot three. Out sprinting the Gladiator for an easy three, yes! And still on the break with a free run on pod two. Scores again! And from Amazon's point of view, another choker of a smoker. Mel's atmosphere kicking out more gas than Apollo 13. Mandy going wide. And lightning in high speed pursuit. Here comes Bell again with acres of space. Oh, she couldn't center it. Looks like the Amazon's completely out of her depth in atmosphere. Our oh, time running out. There's the whistle. Mandy started so strongly, but good work from Lightning prevented her from striking twice. Mandy's fans seem happy enough, and Fash is down there with her. Well done, Mandy. You had a very slow start there, but you bounced off Lightning and got your first pod there, didn't you? That's right, yeah. Hard work? It is hard work, because they are very heavy. It's very heavy going on your legs. And if you don't go exactly over the pod, as we saw, it doesn't activate the sensor, so... Well, we've got a lot more events to go. You got yourself three points! Well done, Mr. Mandy! Well, well, you did say that you enjoyed this one in practice, and it certainly showed. I just did. I just want to laugh every time I come down the ramp. I've never put my hand to one of them things again. Listen, you scored nine points. Well... After one event, Mel's on nine, Mandy's on three. So, moving right along, in the yellow atmosphere, it's a mark! And in the orange sphere, it's John! And now we're facing our gladiators, the Raider! And the Cobra! Over to John Anderson. What an atmosphere for atmospheres. Yes, another full house at the National Indoor Arena. They've come here to rock. Check, punch, for smoke. <laughs> yes, that's definitely working. Contender! Textile machinist looking to stitch up the Cobra in the opening clash. Hold your breath. Boom! Mark almost cannons off the Cobra and on to pod three. Stays a smokeless zone though. John faster than Raider. Oh, just nudged out. Mark being forced wide by Cobra. Cuts inside for pod two. No smoke and Cobra getting no respect from John. And Raider needing Radar to get anywhere near these guys. John with a free run on one. Oh, tries to dunk it, but can only flunk it. Cobra head to head with Mark. And like two butting stags over pod one. Who's got the most push? Oh, Mark gets the three. Yes, surely. It's there. And a face full of smoke for his trouble. Comes John on pod three. Oh, 
desperate last gasp, interception from Raider there. Time's up, gone from Sunderland, more used to the fog on the time than the vapour from these pods. While Cobra and Mark indulged in some heavy metal headbanging, which finished in a serious chorus of smoke gets in your eyes. Well done, Mark. Left you a little bit late there. I did, yeah. You got that last pod, that was all about determination. Oh, anyway, yeah. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I got it in the end, though. Did you think you were going to get more? I was hoping for, yeah. But, I mean, it was good fun. Not too disappointed? No, not really. Not when I got Hun Hunter? No, Cobra. Cobra. Cobra chasing me. Well done. You got yourself three points. Well done, Mark. And Mark's fans pleased with that. Oh, John, a very disappointing first event. That's right, I bobbed and weaved, I went up and down, and every time I was there, the big guy was there, so never mind. And it went across the pods a few times, and the sensors weren't sparked off. So near, but so far, but I'm having fun. And more events to come. Let's hear it for John, no score. Thanks, Julie. Let's go down to John now and see what the gladiators had to say. Well, look at that last one with Mark, that was touch and go, wasn't it? Well, he got the better line in the pod, and I just couldn't push him out, and he got the pod, and good luck to him. He thought he was going to score more, but you closed him down everywhere. Well, it's a tough, hard-hitting game, and I hit him hard, and that's what the Gladiators is all about, tough, hard-hitting stuff. Well done. Let's hear it for Cobra. <laughs> Raider, how did you get on there against John? Uh, well, to be quite honest, uh, coming out of the, uh, the ramps, you're doing like 100 miles an hour to, to yourself, and uh, you hit him, and they roll off you, and you chase. It's a, it's a game of cat and mouse. You bash them as hard as you can. You try to make them not score no points. Uh, rage in a cage. Well done. Let's have a Raider! As always, Raider's explanation's as clear as mud. Oh, hello. Raider must have heard me there, doing his kickboxing routine. Oh. Cobra doing himself a mischief. <laughs> I won't do that too often. Even brought water to my eyes. After one event, John yet to score a mark off the mark with three. Next event. Nightshade and lightning! And that's frightening. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Contenders, ready! Three, two, one! Lightning on Mel, Nightshade on Mandy. 11 steps to the top and 10 points for the first up there. And Mel fancies a trip in the space shuttle, and it will be a smoother ride than Lightning's going to give her. And your Nightshade. Oh, almost falls into her lap. And Lightning marking Mel superbly, anticipating every move. Got her. And at least with those safety crash mats, this is one pyramid where no one ends up wrapped in bandages. Lightning quick stepping away back to position. Andy makes a change. The detective trying to resist arrest. And this is frustrating for Mel. For every one step up, Lightning's there to send her back five. <laughs> Good landing. And Mel's going nowhere fast here. Running out of steam, and running out of ideas. Running out of places to go. Lightning knows where Mel's going. On a barrel roll to the foot of the pyramid. Time running out. Lightning running up. Mel running down. There's the whistle. She's glad that's over. How do you do? By the way, I'm Nightshade. Poor old Mel. I think if she ever sees Lightning again, it'll be too soon. I think for both Mel and Manny, that was quite a frustrating game of pyramid, wasn't it? I think the tactics of all of us contenders were to get the gladiators down to the mat and hope we were quick off the start. But I couldn't even get Nightshade down, she's so tough and strong. It was hard work. Yeah, you didn't have too many violent tumbles, but you did. It was like a rugby match out there. It was like being back at school. Oh, like battling out with the girls in school, mate. But did you enjoy it? Uh, no. All right then, Mel and Mandy. Well done, Lightning. That really was a great performance. But I noticed that every time you weren't pushing her down, you were actually trying to roll down with her, and then you were getting up a lot quicker than her. Yeah, I feel quite confident on the pyramid to run up quite quick, so I don't mind a bit of rough and tumbling going down. That's the part that I really enjoy. And that's what this game's all about, so I hope you enjoyed it, yeah? I think everyone 
performance. Well, indeed. Great performance. I don't think she even got really to the fifth or sixth stairs, really. The step there did very well. Yeah, that's the best time to tumble right from the top, too. Well done. Let's hear it for lightning. Now, Nightshade, your tactics were a little bit different. You were choosing to actually push her as opposed to go back down to the bottom of the pyramid. Well, I'm a bit heavier than lightning and a bit bigger than lightning, so um, I can actually use that tactic. And I think when um, we have a lot of shows to make, sometimes I think it's a good idea to conserve your energy, particularly as I play a lot of the, the battling games on the show. Does it matter to you whether the contender's big or small? In a word, no. Good. Let's hear it for Nightshade and Lightning! Superb pyramid performance from both gladiators. After two events, Mel stays on 9, Mandy 3. So now we move into the men's pyramid with John and Mark. And they're going to be facing Trojan and Hunter. Over to John Anderson. Contenders! So it's Trojan on John, Hunter on Mark. Oh, the contender's doing the gladiator's job for them there. Mark breaking right, Hunter's on his case, spirals him down the staircase. Well, John, a bit of pancake cake there with Trojan. Here comes Mark, spots the gap behind Trojan. Trojan rolls his back down with disdain, and Hunter dispenses with Mark. And courtesy of Trojan, John getting the push around. Going for a walk around. Oh, a Trojan spins John like a top. Poor old John really has been in the Trojan Wars, but keeps on attacking. 15 on the clock, Mark going wide again. Hunter's covering as John bounces back to base. Hunter's got Mark. Mark's got the step. Here comes John. Oh, takes an elbow straight in the face, and poor John is out for the count. That hurt. There's the time. And that looks bad for John. Trojan's there, and John Anderson calling for medical backup. Medic. Here you can see John starts his ascent as Hunter throws Mark down. Mark spins out of control, whacks John with that left elbow, and completely KOs him. Dr. Richard Sibthorpe in attendance. And this looks all right. He's moving his head. He's got conscious. And there's Victoria, John's fiance, of course, worried. Ah, oh, but he's on his feet. And he looks okay. This is good news. Crowd delighted. We're delighted. A little bit groggy, but he's okay. Well, Mark, there's no doubt about it. Another five seconds, and you could have had ten points. Yeah, that's all it took. I mean, I had him on the run, but I just shook him off and. I just ran out of time. You made for a really exciting pyramid because you were so quick off the mark so many times. Yeah, but it just kept getting me, dragging me straight down. Well, never mind, another five seconds and perhaps it would have been yours. And here comes Mr. Tyson. What happened? Are you all right? Excuse me, I'm in the hairdressers. I'll have a short button sat. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, just a bump on the head. Everything, the lights went out and then I woke up and I was at the bottom. And then you woke up and it was all a nightmare. First thing I said was, did Mark get the top? He said, no, so I'm happy. You're happy. Well, it's good to see you back on your feet, raring to go for another few events. Yeah. Let's hear it for John and for Mark. Well, John Tyson must have felt like he met Mike Tyson. Looking again at that incident, Hunter throws Mark off the pyramid. And, ow! Right between the eyes. Now, you don't see that happen very often to a Tyson. Hunter, great performance. Tell me, have you two been working together? Yeah, Trojan and I are good buddies. We've been doing a lot of training together throughout the year, as well as while we've been here in Birmingham. But when we're together on the pyramid, we're the demolition men. Now, you know, <laughs> you know Mark the contender. You knew he was very, very fast. Yeah, he was very quick, John. He gave me the runaround, but uh, I managed to keep him off the top. Great stuff. Thanks, Hunter. Trojan, can I say, Trojan, you're looking a lot leaner. You look like you lost a lot of weight, and you're looking very agile and quick. I've come down a lot, John, from last year, you're right. I mean, this year I'm a bit of a, an action man. Uh, a lot faster, a lot tougher, and again, bottom of the pyramid, man, just like the pharaohs. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Trojan and Hunter! Yes, he's looking a lot sharper this year. He'll need to be. After two events, the men's scores remain the same. 
Well, we're going to take a very short break now, but don't forget to join us for more action here on The Gladiators! So, welcome back. And the first of our contenders to run the zone is Mel! And she's going to be facing Vogue! Vogue, our cover girl gladiator. This Vogue is all the rage with the fans. She's quickly established herself as a firm favourite. hit, she's out. But she'll score 10 points for a bullseye on the top target, 5 for striking the low one, or a point for every weapon fired. Oh, and Vogue's picked her off! Vogue, the victor. Mel's boyfriend can't believe it. Mel scores a point for firing the crossbow, then runs straight into trouble. Right on the kneecap. And the second of our contenders to run against Vogue is Amanda! Contender ready! Well, Mandy's pounded a few beats in her time, never one like this. Safely to the crossbow. Just off target there. Sprints to the next one. Oh, she's hit! Vogue has picked her off in exactly the same spot. Mum and Dad, generous praise for Vogue. Unlucky, Mandy. Again, one point. Balls do come fast, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do. When they hit, they hit hard as well. Did you think you were going to get a little bit further? I hope to, but there you go. <laughs> OK, there's it for Mandy. One point. And next here for Vogue. Two out of two. After that superb display of sharpshooting from Vogue, the scores remain the same. Now it's the men, and the first up is John! And he's going to be running the zone against a Saracen! Over to John Anderson. Contender! the danger zone. 60 seconds for rootin', tootin' and shootin'. Safety to the crossbow, fires the bolts. That was close. Race for the Bazooka Station. Don't forget stations auto-explode after 10 seconds. Lines up. Not a good shot just off the target. Over to the rocket launcher. Saracen, an experienced sniper. Let's it go. Oh, just rattles the outer rim. Last chance, it's the mortar. Saracen machine gunning a fearsome volley of firepower at John. John's just short of the target again. Now he's got to sprint for the cylinder. Oh, Saracen's got him. Dad thinks it's all over. It is now. The draw, man. Oh, John. Unlucky. Did so well. Where did you get hit, do you know? On my head, son. On my head. That's <laughs> cool. Every single shot, I think you hit the target almost. Well, in practice this morning, I got a spot on, so I'm pleased. Four points. Well done. Well done. Let's hear it for John! Family and friends pleased with the four. And next up to face the deadly eye of Saracen is a Mark! <laughs> Over to John Anderson. Set and goes for the cover of the first station. Tell you what, William Tell never had Saracen gunning for him. Just off target. Scrambles across to the next weapon, the bazooka. Oh, the cameraman cops it. He's out of the game. Just off target again. Makes a break for the rocket launcher. Oh, Saracen's got him. Clips the trailing foot. In the replay, he runs straight into a salvo from Saracen. 
After three events, John shoots to four, Mark to five. Next event. First up for Jewel, it's Mel! And she's going to be battling it out against Falcon. Over to John Anderson. Studying the stats, Mel Cambridge from Romford is 5'8 and 140 compared to the figures of the Flying Falcon, who's an inch shorter, but seven pounds heavier. On top. Let's get ready to rumble. Two, Hammer time. Oh, Falcon just scoots her away. That was over in 4.8 seconds. Our better rehearsals, and obviously not today. Wow! It just shows you, doesn't it? Was it nerves or? Um, not at all. No, it was just whammo, lost balance, and you know, here we are on the mat again. Let's hear from Mel. Better luck next time. <laughs> next up, it's Mandy, <laughs> and she's going to be facing Panther. Looking at the facts and figures, Maddie Beach is 5'8 and 133 pounds. That puts her at a disadvantage against Panther, who's two inches shorter but three pounds heavier. Oh, and Mandy straight into the thick of it. Takes a couple. Oh, a three to the back of the box. But she's retaliating now, and these two slugging it out with their seven foot pugil sticks. Left handers, right handers. Backhanders, both girls trying everything. Hammer and tongs. This is going to go the distance. Both girls digging in. Panther piling on the pressure, but time's against her. Two on the clock. That's it. Excellent performance from the contender and the gladiator. Well earned five points for Mandy. Everyone delighted as Mandy... Oh, bails out. Well, let's have another look at the action. Panther pounds away with a mean series of overhead rights, but Mandy soaks up the punishment and pockets the points. Well, Mandy, I have to say at the beginning you looked a little bit vulnerable, but as the game went on, you began to look stronger and stronger. That was really good. It's good to get stuck in. A really good fight. You must be delighted. Five points! <laughs> it was a brilliant fight. She gave everything back that I gave her, and I thought I was going over a couple of times. Good fight, excellent. Brilliant contenders. We certainly enjoyed it. Panther and Mandy! After four events, Mel's on ten. Mandy claws her way up to nine. So now we move into the men's duel with John. And he's going to be facing Rhino. Well, looking at John Tyson's weights and measures, he stands well over six foot and exactly 14 stone. As for the raging rhino, what he lacks in the height division, he makes up for in weight over three stones heavier. That's a lot of pugil power. Rhino straight to work. Oh, he drops his man in the opening second. John will do well to survive this much longer. He's back up now, but looking decidedly uncertain up there. And rhino swinging left. And right, knows he should have finished the job by now. And John is hanging in there grimly, trying to get back into the fight. John Tyson. No Mike Tyson, that's for sure. Oh, Rhino stepped across, and that's a win for John. Rhino furious with himself for that error, forced by frustration. He committed himself, but his body weight carried him forward. You enjoyed that one? With a name like Tyson, there was only one result. Knockout! Well, from my understanding, we have the referee on standby here. If I'm not wrong, he picked up five points, is that correct? Or ten? Ten points. Ten points! <laughs> it was a terrific fight, it really was. He done really well. Um, a few times I thought he was going. And it's not all about power and strength, it's about balance. Well done. Let's hear it for Rhino, but let's hear it for John. 
The Rhino gracious in defeat, a great gladiator. Next up on the duel, it's Mark. And he's going to be facing the might of Warrior. And looking at the tail of the tape of both guys, Mark Everett at 6'2 and 196 pounds, exactly the same as John Tyson, but three inches shorter than Warrior and over five stones lighter. Warrior looks as if he's cutting down a tree. You feel like saying, pick on someone your own size, big boy, but there's no one his own size. He's got him, and the weight of the Warrior too much to overcome. Well, Mark's getting up, and she's getting down. In the replay, Mark had soaked up a fair bit of punishment, tried to lean back out of the Warrior's range. Unfortunately, gravity got hold of him. Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. I didn't really fancy going against Warrior, but... There is a bit of a size difference. Slightly, Width yeah. wise <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was good for me. But it was a good event. Well, you did extremely well. You certainly earned, earned your name up there. Well, let me tell you something up there, and this guy will, uh, will uh, back me up on this. It's very, very difficult up there. It's a lot different from the floor. And when you put these helmets on, you can hardly see anything. And when you get a rattle from one of these uh, things on the head, you're all over the place. So, you're doing very well. Well done. Good. Let's hear it for Warrior and for Mark. Never mind. And that duel puts a whole new complexion on the score. John leaps into the lead with 14, while Mark stays on five. OK, so moving right along. And on her platform, getting ready to hang tough, is Mel! And she's going to be swinging against our gladiator, Zodiac! Zodiac, one of the most improved gladiators this season. And against Mel, she stands an inch taller, but over half a stone lighter. Over to John Anderson. Contando! Ready! Gladiator! Ready! Three! You know, a minute to win it. Ten points for a successful contender crossing, or five for hanging tough in the scoring zone. And Mel looking for Zodiac and a ring. And Zodiac moving in for the kill. Oh, grabs a piece, swings away, and Mel is rattled. Zodiac biding her time, working out her strategy. No, she has a weight disadvantage. Guarding the scoring zone. Keeping a BD on Mel. And Mel's one ringed in a fair drop of trouble. And drop might be the operative word. Mel seems to have recovered. Zodiac almost reluctant to zero in for the strike. Here she goes. The scissors go on. And she cuts her down. Cue the music. To be fair, Mel never really looking at home up there. As she's down there to meet her. Well done, Mel. But you've got to get in the scoring zone. You've got nine sets of rings there. You've got to get there. I know. I just couldn't get the swing. These guards are just really unfamiliar. And you just don't feel very comfortable. And you're more worried about the guards and the swing. And all of a sudden, the Zodiac's there. Has she got some long legs? What's it like? How hard is it once you go dead and you're actually not moving? How hard is it to get your momentum of your body moving you again? Well it, well, it is hard. You've got to somehow swing the legs up and down to try and get the rings moving. And you just frantically grab for anything in front of you. But for me, it's got to be thin air. <laughs> well, unfortunately for you, you didn't get in the scoring zone. No points. But let's hear it for Mel! <laughs> so, yeah, there is an awful lot of arm weight done there, isn't there? There is indeed. I mean, um, I was just concerned with going out there. Mel's a little bit heavier than me, and I knew that she, I mean, she's a very strong girl. Um, I just wanted to keep tight to her. I thought I might have a problem putting her down, but not, not today. Well done. Let's hear it for Zodiac! <laughs> and next up to hang tough is Amanda! <laughs> and she's going to be swinging against the beautiful Jet! Jet's a sleek, supersonic aerial technician. A real crowd pleaser, and she certainly knows how to conduct herself in public. 
Over to John Anderson. And looking at her stats, which is always a pleasure, she stands two inches shorter than Mandy, but of course has that all-important and massive one-pound weight advantage. Holds herself off the platform on another search and destroy mission. Looking cool and comfortable. In the distance, her target is Mandy. Detective Constable, her handcuffs don't come as big as these hang tough rings. A point behind Mel, a win here would be very useful, thank you. Going into the eliminator. Mandy tentative. Keeps getting herself one ring though. And Jet's within striking distance. Mandy one ringed again. And Jack clearly teeing up for the takedown. She's missed once and twice, but I wouldn't count on her missing again. Oh, she's got her. That's it. I'd like you to accompany me to the crash mat. Faultless performance on the rings from Jet. Gladiators keep that clean sheet. Oh, I've certainly got up her nose. Unlucky Mandy. Jet, she looks like she lives up there on the rings, doesn't she? She's good. Yeah, she does, and if you just lose your momentum, that's it, you're stuck there, and then she just comes straight in for you. Now, tell me, were you actually trying to get the other side into the scoring zone, or did you think, at the start, you might be able to get to the platform and get your ten points? I really don't know. I was, was going to try and do a bit of traversing, but I just lost my momentum, and then I was stuck, really. Well, never mind. Off you go. Get yourself ready for the next one. Let's hear it for Mandy! <laughs> yes! That's got to be your second home. You and Lightning, fantastic up there. I've got to admit, I think we both really enjoy that event. But that was a nasty fall. <laughs> Went right through my body. I must admit, it's a very specialised event. The contenders need more time to specialise, practice and training. They'll get there as the shows progress. She was very good, very good. I think there's very few people who would like to go against you or Lightning. <laughs> Let's hear it for Jet! Well, actually, a few million fellows would disagree with that, John. After five events, the scores remain the same, 10-9. Next up, the men. And first to hang tough is John. <laughs> and he's going to be swinging against the hunter. The headhunter looking for another contender sculpt for his collection, an inch taller than John and three stones heavier. Oh, let's hope John's got something to dance oh, about in 60 hunter. seconds' time. Contender! And it's not often we see him up there, actually. The youngest in the gladiator stable, but one of the finest, wants to be a qualified expert in all events. And he spent so much time in training. He's had no time to get his hair cut, though. His speciality this season is the quick finish. And there it is. Very simple, really. Snap that trap shut. Who's going to argue with that? John generously helping the younger man to his feet. And look at her going for it. Time retiring as ever. John started off so well. You well, you had a great start. You nearly got to the centre. Just unfortunately, you met the Hutzman in the middle. Well, if you ain't got the swing, you ain't worth a thing. That will do a nice start. Thanks very much, John. Hunter. Now, I don't think we've seen you up there too often, Hunter. No, no, John. It's not really my event, but uh, I had the hands of A team. Saracen and Wolf give me some advice. And it seemed to pay off, so thanks to them. Let's hear it for the Huntsman! Great performance from the Huntsman. And on his platform, it's Mark! And he's going to be swinging against the man we all love to hate, the Wolfman! And there he is, born to be wild, the calm, the sweet-natured, the cuddly Wolfman. And to be fair, he doesn't look in bad shape for a man of his age, stands the same height as Mark, but with a full stone's advantage in the weight department. Literate as ever. Swings out, looking to keep a clean sheet. Let's hope he keeps his nose clean, too. Oh, he's in trouble. Completely lost his ring. And Mark's in a strong position. 
He's going for the 10. Oh, boy! Wolfman's lost the plot. Mark is delirious. And, boy, will the Wolf have the hump with that? His mum and fiance celebrating. And let's have a look at that turning point. Wolf messes up badly, finds himself on the wrong ring, faces the wrong way, and Mark makes him pay for it. Ten points. Mark, congratulations. Great stuff. You knew you were going to be in a tough time. You made it look easy. <laughs> well, I was a bit wary about fighting the wolf, man, because we all know what he's like. But as it happens, I pulled it off. You don't go up there often, do you? You look natural up there. <laughs> I'm not a natural. I can assure you of that. But... Done well. Ten points. Wolf! Maybe it was a bad day, Wolfman. It's just a bad day. Hey, no excuses. I went for a ring and I missed it. That's unlike you, Wolfman. Uh, what can I say, man? Even the Wolf has an off day. Fair comment. Let's hear it for the Wolfman! That's right, man. The Wolf more angry with himself than with Mark, and after five events, Mark swung himself back into the lead, 14 against 15. Well, that's the end of part two, but don't go away, because you can see some more exciting action here on The Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where it's eliminator time. Now, in the women's competition, Mandy's on nine points and Mel's ahead on ten points. That's a one point difference which will give Mel a half a second's head start. Good luck to both the girls. Over to Fash. Well, Mandy, half a second you've got to make up. I think you might just about do that. What do you think? Well, I'm hoping so, Fash. At the end of the day, we've all had a really good time and I just want to make sure we get through in one piece. Great stuff. Thanks very much. Mel, half a second head start. It's not a lot, is it? Well, it's not really a head start, and we've been even Stevens throughout the show, so what better to finish it on Eliminator head to head? Exactly, and I think this one's going to go right the way to the wire. Absolutely. Mel, Mandy, wish you both all the best. Over to John Anderson. Mel, you will go on my first whistle. Mandy, you will go on my second whistle. Three. Two, one! So Mel's away. Oh, she stopped. I think she got confused by that second whistle. And Mandy has taken advantage of that confusion and now climbs into the lead. And Mandy on the overhead ladder. This requires tremendous upper body strength. Mel joins her. Across that disorientating rolling beam onto the cargo net now. Both contenders have been so close. And that's reflected in the one point difference that's brought them onto the eliminated course. And Mandy will go across to the furthest zip line. Here she comes. That's a good landing. But Mel's right behind her. She must get up this balance beam and keep it coming. Oh, she wobbles a bit. And a second time, and Mel has made up ground now. Then he pulled his hair out, and I don't blame him. And now they're neck and neck for the Travelator. This is going to be exciting for a place in the quarter final. It's been so close, but it's Mandy Beecher to the top first as Mel struggles. Oh, Mandy, you came and you gave and you triumphed. Who needs Barry Manilow? Mel Smooth! But her fans have got nothing to sing well, about. Well, I said it was going to go all the way to the wire, and it did. How do you feel? Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's all over, and you're there. Yeah, just like to say thanks to Mel, because right from the start, we knew it was going to be a very close competition. And uh, one of us had to win, one of us had to lose. Well done. Let's hear from Mandy, our winner! Mandy Beecher, no Beecher's Brook to tackle, but one heck of an eliminator course. Well, Mel, at the end of the day, there wasn't a lot in it. I can't believe it. I, on the second whistle, I hesitated. Mandy said, whatever you do, don't stop when you hear the second whistle. So what did I do? I stopped. 
had a bit of trouble at the, with the bars and then perhaps just a bit slow up on the road, but you managed to catch her up. It was so close and my legs are just whacked at that Trevelator. You've had some great supporters with you here though this evening. It's been absolutely brilliant, thank you. I'm sure we look forward to seeing you back at school. Let's hear it for Mel. Mighty Mel indeed did herself proud tonight. And so did she, the ladies winner, Mandy Beecher. So now it's time for the men's eliminator where we're in exactly the same situation with a half a second head start to Mark's advantage. Well, John, it's not a lot in it, is there half a second? No, anything can happen. Um, it's been really close all the way around. It's been a great week. Mark's a great guy. We'll have some fun. It'd be so nice if you both could win. I know, no, he's been a good, good opponent, um, but we'll have to see what happens. Absolutely. Best of luck to the two of you. See you both at the end. Over to John Anderson. Mark, you will go on my first whistle. John, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Fingers crossed and off goes Mark Everett. Only half a second ahead of John Tyson, our leisure centre manager. Gladiator's very own Gordon Brittus. And Mark doing a great job pumping away on that handbike. Oh, pulls up a bit short. And that mistake allows John Tyson to make up some valuable ground as he joins him on the cargo net. And this looks like it has all the making of another nail-biting eliminator. Mark Everett will come down the zip line in his mind. He'll be thinking about the balance beam, keeping his composure, and saving up what energy he has left. Oh, he stumbled off! The crowd are on their feet, and here comes John Tyson. Oh, he's working across the balance beam. He lands first. Will he take him on the Travelator? No! He's lost it by his fingernails! And Mark Everett from Boston and Lynx, our textile machinist, goes into the corner final. What an eliminator! But this man, he's been banged on the head on Pyramid, he's got a ball in the head on Danger Zone, and he's game. The crowd love him. He's been a tremendous contender. Well done, John Tyson from Sunderland. Congratulations, Mark, but he pushed you all the way, didn't he? I could see him on the balance beam, just to my left. God, that was the longest minute of my life. I can imagine. How does it feel, eh? It feels brilliant. Where's Scott Scott how I'm feeling? Well done. Well done, it's here for Mark! John, I said at the beginning I wanted you both to win, and for the first time in my life I didn't have my way. Only kidding. Disaster! Not really, I enjoyed it. It was hard, it was a good close run. I'm happy. You certainly are, and you've had some great support this evening. Yeah, thank you, Sunderland! Woo! I'd be really, really sorry to lose you, but the best of luck in the future, John Tyson! John's family delighted with his performance, and Mark's fiancé delighted with his. Ollie, we've just seen two cracking eliminators. I know, and somebody always has to lose, but who knows what awaits us next week, so join us for more action here on The Gladiators! A woman! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Focusing on treble twenties and double tops, our keen dart players will have to back it up with sound general knowledge too. Bullseye is next on Challenge. And tonight at nine, face off against the mighty chaser. Bradley Walsh brings us the chase. <laughs>